Cartoon Network's Clarence is not my favorite animated series from the 2010s, and it certainly has a few problems. Like, I don't think it was setting the best example for younger audiences, there's a reason why Skylar Page got fired from being the showrunner, and the show itself kind of stopped being interesting as time went on, but I still really enjoyed its original pilot episode when I first saw it in July 2013. It really captures the inner mentality of how a child views the world, and while this might sound strange to you, I also think that Clarence has some really solid character designs that are actually good. I'm sure you've noticed by now that a lot of the major characters in Clarence feature unrealistic anatomies composed of basic shapes, but they're not drawn this way because it's a cartoon and cartoons need to look silly, they're drawn this way because it serves two specific functions. It makes them appear more distinct from the other characters, and also, more importantly, it conveys their personalities. Now, I don't consider myself an expert on character design, but I have learned enough to know that there is a certain psychology involved with basic shapes, especially the big three that we've all known since elementary school. The square, the circle, and the triangle. Squares give off a sense of stability and uniformity. Circles indicate friendliness, while triangles convey energy or activeness. And when we look at the main trio of Clarence with that in mind, you'll notice that those same qualities apply to each of those three characters. Clarence himself is made up of round circles, which reflects how he considers everyone he knows to be his friends. The character Sumo is composed of triangles, which reflects how he is so active that he's almost unpredictable. And Jeff's entire head is a square which reflects how he's usually the most stable or rigid member of the group. Oh, how come that kid doesn't want to play with us? Oh, Jeff doesn't like to have fun. You don't just understand who the characters are by watching their actions in the show, you understand who their characters are immediately by looking at them. The character designs reinforce their character personalities and vice versa which is why having basic shapes in your anatomy is actually good character design. If you know how to look for it, this shape theory can also be seen in other shows like Steven Universe or even feature-length movies like The Incredibles or Wreck-It Ralph, which even went as far as actually designing their locations around each of those same three basic shapes. But to be clear, this isn't a rule that you have to abide by, or a be-all end-all definition of quality character design. It's just a set of conventions that professional artists in animation are following. And if you follow it as well, it might even help you when you make character designs of your own. Don't just draw what looks cool, draw your character's appearance so that it specifically communicates who they are as a personality. Again, Clarence is far from my favorite animated series, and I don't really care about the show anymore, but I do think it provides a good demonstration of how shape theory works in character design. Because even when there are shows that you don't like, or shows that stop being as good as they used to be, there's always a chance that you can still learn something from it. I mean, I don't think it sets a good example when the characters get away with trespassing, wrecking supermarkets, and destroying a bunch of things for no reason because I don't want children to imitate that. But the character designs are good. Okay, bye, I love you.